Hello, good evening. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst. So should I say good weekend? Uh, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFTs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's trading session, the uh, 13th of February 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of the uh, market itself for Monday's trading session, uh, we certainly are coming off uh, US equities, certainly hitting new highs again. If we bring up the uh, chart of the S&P 500, we can certainly see that the pivot high was uh, 2320 or 2319. And the daily chart certainly is breaking out. Okay, so again, certainly needs to be respected in terms of the uh, European markets. Now, European markets certainly seem to be bogged down by Frexit, Grexit and Brexit. OK, so the political uncertainty as well, given the uh, elections looming in France, Germany, OK, and obviously the ongoing uh, uh, discussions with regards to Greece as well. Certainly seems to be a lot of uncertainty surrounding that. OK, so uh, again, radical um, uh, politics in terms of populism certainly sweeping through Europe and obviously the uh, the future of the Eurozone certainly is in doubt as well. And in the fact that uh, we have um, concerns over a rising inflation now in the Eurozone and uh, potential talk of tapering and uh, it being a conundrum for Mr Draghi and obviously Mr Trump's comments regarding the uh, the actual Euro being a uh, uh, unfair. Uh, we have Mr Trump with Mr Arby over the weekend and it'll be interesting to see what his uh, conclusion will be in terms of the actual uh, currency itself so that's certainly something that we keep an eye out for as well now let's look at the actual uh, technical picture given the fact that fundamentals they're nothing um, really important other than the fact that we have uh, uh, GDP data from uh, Japan uh, on Sunday night going into Monday's trading session uh, we have money supply and new loans data from China so it will be um, an insight into a Chinese session and the uh, Japanese session we have German Bubba monthly report and that's about it really okay that's about it okay in terms of uh, economic data uh, shifting the the actual bias now going given the fact that Asian markets will dictate we have the Nikkei up 2.5 percent now the Nikkei now is into resistance there is one final resistance level that needs to be hit at 19480 uh, zone okay given gap fill resistance there okay given the fact that we have actually closed this gap here okay so two gaps still pot potentially remain open but we do have an unfilled gap below and given the whopping 2.5% uh, advance on um, on the uh, the actual Friday it's going to be very hard for the markets to sustain that so certainly looking for a pullback come uh, come the uh, Monday session so certainly in the bearish camp for Monday and then we'll see exactly how the market reacts thereafter especially given the fact that US markets obviously have broken out to new highs also with regards to the Shanghai index as well you are into resistance so again expecting the Shanghai certainly to pull back okay certainly pulling back as well now the uh, the actual um, uh, uh, Nikkei did actually reach at almost 19,500 after hours. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Okay, so it's certainly looking for a pullback in the Asian session, which in turn will trigger a pullback in the European markets as well. Now, one of the key factors uh, really for Europe, given the fact that German DAX really is a chief in Europe, is the H&S formation. Now, even though US markets are making new highs, the German DAX certainly hasn't followed through. If anything, Friday's session certainly was negative, whilst the US markets were positive. So just bear that in mind as well, okay? That's something certainly to take into consideration. We're still below that 50 to 60, 71%, okay? And therefore, one would presume that you are looking for risk aversion, okay? And US markets weren't exactly uh, stellar. I mean, you had the Nasdaq up 0.3, S&P up 0.3%, and the Dow up 0.4%. So just bear that in mind. Also, with regards to the Dow transports, Dow transports certainly have confirmed a double top. A Russell 2000 certainly is holding into or into resistance and holding resistance and certainly hasn't pushed higher so no new highs there so bear that in mind as well from my perspective certainly bearish for the German DAX certainly you, you are carving out here now a lower high you're looking at a bear flag formation certainly looking to trigger here given the uncertainty regarding France obviously Germany going forward as well uh, the uh, euro itself I mean you bring up the chart the euro USD especially Mr. Trump's comments with regards to the euro being undervalued or potential currency manipulation with Mr. Draghi have to come out and actually confirm. You certainly have this uh, this potential pattern looming. So let me just uh, give you an insight here. And this could certainly trigger the move lower. So you have the left shoulder, the head, which has been confirmed now, right shoulder here, and you're looking to break out at any time. Okay. So if you do break out on the euro USD with the dollar obviously collapsing, given the fact that the US 10 year now certainly posting an inverted head and shoulders formation, 
uh, pro prices of the US 10 yen. Also, you have the um, the dollar so you're looking top heavy as well. Uh, IHS formation on the Euro USD, you're looking at 1.08 down to 1.0350 or 04. So you're looking at a 1.1 target on the upside. So 1.1, 1.111, 1 you are looking at potential target on the upside. So given the fact that inflation certainly is rising, and given the fact that you have the uh, stochastic and the RSI now coming into support here. For the right shoulder, you're looking for a potential thrust higher. So if you take the pivot low from here, take it to the pivot high, basically the concept of lower lows and lower highs is over. And you are now looking for a higher high, a higher low, look then and there after searching for a higher high. So if that's the case, then you are looking at the euro moving higher, which we all know is negative for European exports going forward. So just bear that in mind. And also it's a reversal of the risk trade. So uh, given the fact that individuals are no longer expecting any more any further stimulus from the eurozone, uh, you'll certainly see that obviously feeding through into equities as well. Okay, German DAX a daily chart is bearish. Okay, German, German daily chart is bearish, then the whole of Europe is bearish from my perspective. Okay, that's my understanding based on intermarket analysis. Okay, so 60 minute chart, you are you do have multiple resistance zones here. Okay, so you're looking at uh, multiple resistance zones. Okay, you have resistance here and here. So these are the zones that you're looking at for potential resistance, and then you have gap fill above as well at 11 a. 102 okay so you're looking at gap fill at 11800 okay right in terms of the uh, next move uh, let's look at the 10 minute chart the german dax now okay giving you an insight here uh, friday's session certainly was weak uh, okay even though the us markets were pushing two new highs and when one variable is 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 bullish and the other one is weak that's a telltale that's a good sign okay so to be very very careful with regards to that so if the US markets are pushing new highs and European markets are lagging or actually showing extreme weakness then that's not a good sign that's generally indications of a potential market top or reversal imminent so just bear that in mind as well okay and now looking at the uh, German markets here you can see we obviously held gap fill uh, the market after hours and the German DAX did actually push higher the German DAX went up to 11666 so certainly pushing back up to 11680 11700 certainly seems to be resistance for now if we cross reference the DAX with the MDAX okay so let's look at the actual MDAX itself okay so the MDAX certainly reaching that potential double top so to certainly keep an eye on the MDAX here as well, okay, in terms of the actual next move. If the MDAX continues to push higher, then obviously it will take the German DAX with it as well. So just bear that in mind. So the weekly chart certainly is uh, indicating bullish new new movement here. But we actually need to see that continuation uh, as well. So just bear that in mind, okay. So the, the MDAX certainly is pushing higher to a large extent, but the German DAX certainly isn't following. So something has to give okay so either the german dax pushes higher with the mdax making and making obviously new highs and pushing further okay and that takes the uh, dax 30 with it or the mdax starts to reverse and sends the german dax lower okay so looking for unfilled gap below on the german dax here okay so mdax certainly keep an eye on the MDAX 50. In terms of the tech all share, you are still now into resistance. Now, if the tech all share breaks out on this weekly chart and breaks out with conviction, then certainly needs to be respected. So just bear that in mind. You can see that it certainly has to a large extent, given the fact that the NASDAQ certainly has pushed higher. But given the uncertainty regarding Europe, again, one to watch, okay? If we see continuation, continued move, movements here, even though it is on good volume here, folks, okay? The RSI now is coming into resistance we will need to see continuation. So again, Monday's trading session will be important. If the German DAX starts to push higher and uh, breaks past 11,700, then obviously the bulls are in control. If we start to reverse it, then the bears certainly are in control. Okay, so just keep certainly keep an eye out for that, especially given the fact that the French CAC, if I move over to the French CAC on the daily chart, you are looking at resistance here, folks. The French CAC is holding into six, Feb 61 to 75% resistance, okay? You're looking for a lower high, and then obviously looking to close the gap below at 4630. So keep an eye out for that. 60-minute chart on the French CAC, you can see we're still holding resistance here at 4850. So keep an eye on that. We have a bear flag formation in, in play. So looking for bearish price action on the French CAC, okay, folks? 10-minute chart as well. You're looking for weakness. You're looking for resistance. Okay, so looking to actually move lower down to uh, 4790 and into support. So just bear that in mind, okay? In terms of the uh, the actual FTSE 100 now, let's move on to the FTSE. Daily chart is into that Fib 61%, okay? 
daily chart. The monthly chart is, is key for me, really. Uh, the monthly chart has a topping tail. The topping tail was 7,350. Certainly not expecting the market to break through that. Okay, looking for a, uh, a move lower based on that, given the fact that we have Brexit concerns uh, and obviously uncertainty going forward. So FIB 61% certainly holding here. Okay, 60-minute chart on the German DAX, or so the FTSE 100, you can see that you have this diagonal, key diagonal trend line, certainly holding your previous support equals resistance holding, and you have two topping tails. So a topping tail here and topping tail here. So this uh, zone... Uh, around the uh, 47 or 7270 zone certainly being rejected so just bear that in mind okay although having said that if we could keep consolidating in this 7240 zone and remain above 7230 then the bulls certainly will continue and push this market back to the highs so just bear that in mind but you clearly see that it's lagging the, uh, the actual us equities in terms of FTSE, certainly a double top was printed at 7270 therefore support is seen at 7240 back down to 7230 and then you have support at 7215 so they are your key support zone this is a diagonal trend line once it breaks obviously the bearish bias certainly comes into play so just bear that in mind now the FTSE 100 certainly is uh, influenced by the uh, price of oil quite um, obviously prolifically so given the fact that the daily chart of oil now is into resistance therefore one would expect the FTSE certainly to be into resistance as well okay also, you have the Aussie and Kiwi. So if I bring up the Kiwi chart as well, the Kiwi and the Aussie have a, a strong correlation. Or the Kiwi Aussie and the FTSE have a strong correlation. The Kiwi obviously has reversed. The FTSE has yet to. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Also, the Aussie chart as well. Let's just bring up the Aussie. Uh, the daily chart certainly is into or approaching resistance as well. Certainly is a negative sign for the uh, the FTSE itself. So just bear that in mind. Okay, these are all things that we certainly need to take into consideration. Okay, so let's move on uh, in terms of the FTSE. Let's go on to the FTSE 250. Uh, you can see the weekly chart certainly starting to pop its head above okay so just bear that in mind that's certainly something that we'll certainly keep an eye out for if the FTSE 250 continues its first higher my interpretation thus far even though it can be wrong and again folks this is just my opinion is that we are looking to reverse that's my interpretation and understanding certainly looking to reverse uh, especially given the uncertainty regarding fiscal uh, obviously uh, fiscal policy fiscal stimulus going forward and whether or not mr trump has actually uh, has some concrete details with regards to his fiscal stimulus and it potentially failing as well okay so FTSE 250 has broken out so you do have to respect that and again if the FTSE 100 61 percent is negated bear that in mind if the fib 61 percent is negated then uh, you are looking at 75 percent as well once we breach that 7290 zone it's basically 7350 next okay so the bulls certainly have won well my bias certainly going into monday is certainly going to be one of a bearish nature okay especially given the oil prices into resistance okay and euro certainly remains afloat as well and the uncertainty regarding the eurozone for exit brexit brexit etc okay let's look at the euro stocks now last and uh, last but not least uh, the euro stocks uh, the as you can see here the daily chart has this bear flag formation so certainly look uh, inclining toward a bearish bias on the uh, daily chart 60 minute chart looking at the 60 minute chart you do have an unfilled gap at uh, 33 or 3300 but that certainly hasn't closed you are holding uh, key resistance here at uh, 3280 and you can clearly see there's a bear flag in play you're looking at uh, gap fill below okay you can see a gap fill here okay so that gap fill certainly remains a key target below okay so just watch out for that although you do have potential support at 3250 as well and then obviously the ultimate support here at 3210 now the daily chart certainly has a lower low lower high double top certainly in place so looking for a lower high and therefore looking for a lower low okay so again let's keep an eye on the european equities indicating or leading the bearish bias from my interpretation and my perspective also given the fact that the s p 500 certainly seems to be overstretched and extended as well certainly looking for a pullback okay i think that's a good summation of uh, european equities for monday's trading session uh, i wish you a prosperous week and the best for uh, the trading week ahead goodbye now